radio shop and we're going to start working on this record player, this box you see here, fully automatic symphonic record player. A little bit of glue to fix that back. Hey, it's kind of shrunk, hasn't it? Probably got wet somewhere or something like that. So let's look inside here, see what we got. Okay, there's a couple of notes. Hum, cartridge gone, clean inside. And that's the name of the owner, so we'll just put that over here. Put that note, just stick them on the side here, it won't be lost. And right away you can see, yeah, it's not much of a cartridge here. No, it's an empty shop, nothing in there. Pretty clean, nice and clean looking. Okay. A little bit of lubrication might be required there. Hey, you know what the best thing to do here is plug it in and turn it on. Just the volume control. And let's do that. some better places to put my camera on. Hmm. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Must have enough junk in my shop. Okay. That's a little better. Always an exciting moment when you just go ahead and plug it right in there. Let's see, right now it's set to off. Okay, we're gonna put it on current limiting. There we go. What was that? It's just this. <laughs> and we switch it on. Now you can't see. Let me go. I'll keep holding it here. So there it is, turning. Pretty good. Ooh, here comes the hum. Not volume sensitive. So we know we know just what that is, don't we? It's gonna be the power supply. Hey, that's pretty strong. That's really good. Let's try 45. This thing's in good shape. Yes, sirree. This is not gonna be a a tough one. Mostly it's knock out the hum. I can't do anything about the cartridge here in my shop. I have to go down to the bigger shop to, to get a new cartridge. But I will tell you what we will do. We won't. It's, it's very unlikely we have exactly the right cartridge for this. We may have some that can make use of the screw hole and we can screw the bracket in. But we will, and this is a, s a stereo. <laughs> Stereo. Stereo, yes. No, symphonic. Symphonic. Model 962. Doesn't say stereo anywhere. No, oh, it's got two speaker openings here. Yeah, that's interesting. So I think what we're going to do now is, uh, well, I can do one more little test here with these wires, Let's put a little volume on it. seem to be doing something. Anyway, the amplifier is definitely amplifying, so I don't think we even have bad tubes in here. That's pretty good. Unless one screw is missing, and that screw doesn't look like the proper screw to me. And uh, this guy, we could lift this guy right out, but I don't think it's necessary. 
Hey, why don't I take that screw out? Just for fun, I'll leave the unit running. In case I can generate some extra excitement with sparks and other exciting things. Let's see. Now, if you heard that little bling just now, that was my my camera is actually a uh, a playbook. Okay. Yeah, I think I better cut the power to do this. Okay. Because I don't know what I'm getting into here. Here comes the amp. couple screws we'll have this open let's continue let's just keep going here because today I don't have a lot of time I got so many things to do today Ooh. Okay, that's a nut falling off I wasn't expecting that let's put that back together and I need a little tray here Where's my trays? I don't have one, so I'll put that right there. I have to get a tray of parts. You know, you never know what you're going to get into when you do these things. You have every intention of you know, working on it, finishing it, and putting it away. But usually you have to stop for a while. And you have all these parts out, and maybe you move on to another project and get those parts. And next thing you know, it's all mixed up. So, well, it's a cute little looking amplifier one tube, one tube amplifier and uh, it looks beautiful. Have a look. Let's see this. There we go. Hang on one second here. Let me just Get out my magnifier. A little closer. It's in really good shape. So th this guy's probably been sitting in a closet somewhere uh, for a long time. There's the power cord. There's no relief on it. No, that's not the power cord. Power cord's got to be among these here. So anyway, we're just going to have to replace this guy. What is he? It's 150 volt. A 50-50. So we'll put two, uh, put two of these guys in. That'll knock the hum out. And that's about the most I can do here. I think the uh, mechanism is in perfect shape. So one speaker no other speaker of course it's not stereo but for some reason it has a stereo cartridge so sometimes there's a, an extra output somewhere on it but I don't see any such thing I don't see anywhere you can get like a left channel output a lot of these record players were made so they could claim to be stereo get that word stereo on them because it would sell a lot better when in fact the player itself was mono with just an output for an external amplifier, which I'm sure nobody had. So, might as well, might as well just get get right to work here and do this all in one video. I, I better get my soldering iron warming up. And let's see about putting the camera in a better position here. Let me just let's try let's try this guy here. There we go. A little rocky, but that should do it. Okay, now usually I like to make use of these leads coming out of like a 
capacitor to make the, the connection. And sometimes I leave these capacitors right in. They're a hassle to get out because of this metal band. Uh, other times I take them out because I need space inside. Now we're going to try to put two of these guys in there. So what I what I like to do is I just like to twist the uh, twist together the negatives. They sit in here. Well, they certainly can, can't they? There's lots of room in there. So I don't think we got to take this guy out. You know, when you leave in the old parts, you leave a trail for the next guy to kind of recognize what it is you've done. Now the thing about these two is, uh, you know, this thing's high voltage is fairly well hidden by these insulated wires, so contacting the high voltage, not so likely, although in fact it's right here. When I put this guy in, you know, these long leads here, with high voltage on them, kind of flopping around in there, I don't want that. So I like to put some spaghetti on it, on the connections. Well, we'll wait until I'm just about to make them. I also like to make them as short as possible. You know what? Maybe we can do that. We'll shorten them right up. Connect the red wire right up tight to it. And I can save on my tubing. Oops, lost that inside the player. Weather is very bad here today, outside of Toronto, where I'm located. Looks like it's going to be a rainy day most of the day. The last couple of weeks, the weather has been just fantastic here. Absolutely fantastic. It's been cool and sunny. And uh, if you're not familiar with Toronto, you might think my in Canada. Canada's cold, so that's a cold place. I'll bet you it's cold in Toronto, but actually in the summer it's very hot. Uh, because of the humidity, it's very, very uncomfortable at times. But it hasn't been this summer. Uh, we've had one week of really high temperatures uh, for us. High anyway, I mean it's not high by Texas standards, but it's definitely high for up here, and it would be 30, 32, 34 degrees, which is comparable to, I guess, 90 in that range. But the humidity is what makes all the difference. And, uh, you know, because we're located right in the middle of all the Great Lakes, there's just so much moisture in the air all the time. There we go. So hopefully our luck has not run out. Uh, we're going to get more excellent weather. The forecast for the, for the whole summer was uh, going to be cool with the odd hot spell, and that's kind of just exactly how it's been. I don't know. I don't know how they figure this stuff out, but they do. Okay. 
cast wire. Smoky. I'll trim off the uh, ends here. Okay, a bit of cat action upstairs there. I think you can hear my wife shouting out. Too numerous cats. Okay, now lots of wire sticking out here. I'd like to fix this to something. Fixing it onto this old capacitor is a good idea. Let's see if we can do that. Well, maybe it's not a good idea. Brings these very close to this plate I'm going to put on. So I think I'll, I'll take another alternative. I'll just hit this with a whole bunch of tape lovely blue tape and uh, that should protect us from any future excitement you know these these positives are pretty close to this guy this guy I left them too long a little too long there he can bend around so I think the first thing I'll do is put a little bit of tape around the negative You know, frankly, once this is, you know, back in and uh, top is put on, then nothing bad should happen to it. Sounds like famous last words, though. Mm. Okay, not the best tape job, but that should suffice. That will go around the whole thing. Well, some technicians might just tuck this back in the way it is, and uh, but you know it's on wires, so it's floppy. You don't want that. So Twenty years from now, this tape will be somebody's nightmare. In you go. Very good. I'm going to trim the rest of this unnecessary wire off here. There we go. She's not going to hum now. I also noticed the controls are not noisy at all. Say we put some power on this guy and see what it sounds like now. Okay. Power on. There we go. Look at that. Right up to speed immediately. You know, older record players, there's usually a lot of mechanical problems with the lubrication turning into glue, basically, and gumming everything up. And sometimes they don't work at all. Sometimes they work slow. Sometimes they don't have enough strength to uh, work the mechanism. Okay, we never tested that today. Let's give that a test. Even though there's no uh, a record, a uh, needle rather, you know, put a record on. Put this, how about this one? You have like this disco heat. <laughs> yes. That's my favorite record. Yeah. Disco heat. Love is in the air. Hey, that's a famous song. I don't know if I really thought of that as being a disco song. Let's put it in the air. Okay, so the only reason I'm putting the record on is to see it. Now. See, this arm's not working quite so good. Here we go. There it goes. Over. Beautiful. Okay, it's not going to go down because there's no weight in it.
You notice there's no hum. That buzz is from uh, these open wires. So there we are. With the record down, well that's interesting. With this arm down, indicating there's no records waiting, normally a record player will shut itself off at that point. It will know it's played the last record in the stack. It's done. In this case, it came over and tried to play again. Because no large record fell through triggering this lever, it thought it was a 10 inch or a 45. Uh, 10 inch record? A 45 RPM record anyway, so we see it's in position to play a 45. So that's not quite right, and that relates to this guy here. He's, he's just. He's, actually, we need a little bit of lubrication or something. So let's look into that. Let's just keep going here. Okay, power off. We'll pull the plug out too, just to be doubly sure. It's always embarrassing to get electrocuted on video. Put away the fantastic disco record. We'll see if we can just lift this guy right out. may or may not work. And it will not work. It's not quite the same as other screw systems. Come on, little fella. You're not going to want to come out that easy. You're a bum. Okay. Nothing holding that in there. How do you like that? Okay. This is the usual thing where you need three or four hands to do this properly. And I don't have three or four hands. Up she comes. Amplifier back in here. It's really binding. Why is that? Look oh, out, the lid's coming down. <laughs> the excitement mounts. Here we go. Now it's free. Okay, can you see down in here? Yes, you can. Now that looks like, looks more like glue than lubrication to me, let's see. No, it's still, it's still. And all that needs to be loosened up a bit. But uh, it's not. That's. That's the tone arm. It moves quite nicely. This is the part that needs a little lubrication here. So I'll put a little lubrication on there. I think I'm going to use uh, some oil. And I think I'm going to lubricate it from the top here because it's going to run down. Gravity is going to be. You know, it's always better to have gravity your friend and assistant than to try to work against gravity. Hey, I've got a new oil dispenser. Let's try it out. How do you like that? <laughs> Let's give it a shot here and see how it goes. Squeeze the trigger. I got 
oil all over. I can't get too much oil in that oil can. Okay, we'll exercise this a little bit. Still seems a little bindy. on that. Something a little heavier. I'll make it all the way through. Let's just put a dab. A little dab here. Right on that spring. Okay. Gravity not helping us much there. Usually there's a, a lever that this thing is working. I don't see it. There it is, way down at the bottom there. Just as this thing reaches the bottom, this lever down here moves. Can you see that? Can you see that far down? Yeah, you can see that. Uh, and that lever is important because that's how the uh, record player is finding out that there's no more records to play. Now this piece... Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray... Uh, well, I have a couple options there. What I really want to do is loosen up the oil that's there. So I have a, something called release all, which I'm not particularly recommending. It's just what I've got here. And uh, it's enough to make a nice mess. So let's, let's put that in there and we'll just kind of soak her up a little bit. That's a mess. Okay, so we'll leave that to kind of do its thing. Which is mostly run off. at the motor bearing, but, you know, the motor seems to be running just fine. I don't think I want to fool with it. And there's lots of things to, to work on that uh, aren't even necessarily broken. Uh, this is a little tricky. So I'm just going to kind of fudge it in there. I'm going to leave it on the angle like that, because I think I can test it like that. The 
think that's working better. Okay, power on. A little safety check. Plug it in. Power's not on yet. I have two switches I have to throw to put the power on. That's where my safety scheme here. Okay, power on. And we need a record. Hey, how about disco heat? <laughs> Let's give it a try. Uh, not gonna work. Well, this thing's on a bad angle. Okay, so we gotta. There's a good chance we 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 really actually finished with doing the work on this. Gee, that kind of gets it binds in there. Okay, that's interesting. They uh, they built this. I put that little plate on. Yeah, why don't we do that before I forget? that. There's a little bit of tape on it. That's no doubt for these. Which are up a little high. screwdriver. Now, I know this is a Canadian built record player because of the kinds of screws in it. I don't know how common these screws are. But they're really common in Canada. It's the Roberts square head screwdriver. Canadians should be very proud. Some Canadian quite a while ago. Invented uh, a screwdriver which is probably the best screwdriver. Oh, here we are. If you're not familiar with it, because I don't really know what other countries have. But the, the square screwdriver holds the screws really nicely. It never never slips. Very seldom will it cam out like the uh, Phillips Phillips screws. You have trouble with the, uh, the screwdriver camming out. It's not going to be so easy. They don't have a nut on this side, they have one of these little plates. Okay, there we go. Okay, can't forget to put the plate on anymore, it's on. Okay, let's have another try. Here we go, it's an exciting moment here. Let's see, the first song on this side is My Claim to Fame. I've never even heard of it. By James Wells. I'll have to sing it to you actually, because it's not going to play. Whoops! The record went right down. How'd that happen? Just maybe more how I did it. There we go. This is wrong. What's okay. There we go. I know how to work these things. And we're all set over here. Switch on. Power on, yep. Switches on, turn to MS turning, records going. And there she goes. Ta da! I will start singing at this point, but I won't bring this across. Come on! There it goes. Now it should shut right off. Perfect. I think it was all due to this not quite seating properly uh, because of the binding of the shaft in here. So we know the mechanism is working fine. I think this record player is done. Too bad we're not going to hear it here 
in my home shop because I, I just don't have every cartridge in the world. When I go down to the big shop with it, we'll, we'll mount a cartridge on it. And uh, there you go. So that's the whole thing from start to finish. I thought I was going to do two or three videos on this, but I have an all in one video. Whole oh, shebang. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's a fairly complete look at repairing a, uh, a record player like that. Um, this one being an easy one. I've spent hours on others with mechanism problems. So, so goodbye from my shop, and thanks a lot for watching.